Hi YouTube, it's Penny. I received a couple of things um, over the last few nights that I wanted to share with you. Um, so on March 26th, I had several visions of wild animals, um, all, all different kinds, and um, they were running in lots of different directions. So like a stampede, only um, they were completely disorganized, you know, so whereas a stampede, they're kind of all following the leader and going in the same direction. This was not like that. They seemed very um, confused and frightened. Um, and then uh, later that night, I had a dream of a, a large lioness who was charging me and another family member. And I don't know why, but I spontaneously called, here, kitty, 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 <laughs> like you would call a, a domestic house cat or something. And she ran straight up to me and she, she took my arm in her mouth. And um, as my fear increased, um, so would the pressure of her grip on my arm. But then I discovered that if I remained calm and showed no fear, that she would loosen her grip. Um, and then I woke up. So while this dream, um, you know, may be only symbolic of spiritual warfare, which is a possibility, um, I, I also believe that the remnant um, is going to receive power to to um, have dominion over the wild beasts of the earth during the Great Tribulation. And that so long as we exercise our authority over them and don't show any fear, that they will not be able to harm us. And the verse that came to my mind was from Isaiah 11, 6 through 9. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play in the hole of the asp, which is a venomous snake, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy all in my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Yahovah as the waters cover the sea. So um, when I went to, uh, I went ahead and asked the Lord for scriptural confirmation, and he took me to Jasher 57, and the word children is repeated more than 80 times in that chapter. So that's actually what stood out for me more than any you know, verse in that chapter. And I believe that the Lord was using Jasher 57 as a whole just to confirm the Isaiah scripture that had first come to my mind about children. Um, and then last night, March 27th, um, I had a dream that I was in a building that began filling with water. And then I heard uh, a really loud noise um, and someone shouted, storm surge. And without warning, this huge wave rolled in and filled the entire building. And um, I woke up. And the scripture that I got for that was from the Wisdom of Solomon, uh, chapter 14, verses one through three. Again, one preparing himself to sail and about to pass through the raging waves calls upon a piece of wood more rotten than the vessel that carries him. Um, for verily, desire of gain devised that and the workman built it by his skill, but your providence, O Father, governs it, for you have made a way in the sea and a safe path in the waves, showing that you can save from danger, um, actually from all danger. So um, I, I know that I've been bringing a lot of messages of judgment and warning and, you know, um, but I'm also wanting to bring messages of hope to let you know that there is hope for those who are in Christ. Um, and to prove it, um, the Lord, sometimes he'll wake me up in the morning with a song. And, you know, sometimes there's songs that I don't want to hear. Um, but this morning he woke me up to a song um, called, It Took a Miracle. And I haven't, I don't remember the last time I heard this song. Um, and uh, the song says, my father is omnipotent and that you can't deny a God of might and miracles tis written in the sky and the chorus is it took a miracle to put the stars in place it took a miracle to hang the world in space 
but when he saved my soul, cleansed and made me whole, it took a miracle of love and grace. And so as we've been, you know, looking at the signs in the heavens and all the things coming upon the earth and we see all these miracles um, and we know that they're all by the hand of God, allowed by the hand of God um, as his judgment. And um, anyway, I, I, I want to encourage you that the greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation, right? It's interesting because the scripture that he took me to was Luke 6, 19 through 23. So this was when um, Yeshua, Jesus was on the earth, and it says the whole multitude sought to touch him. For there went virtue out of him and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be the poor, for yours is the kingdom of Elohim. Blessed are they that hunger now, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when, you sh and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for my son's sake or defriend you on Facebook or whatever. Rejoice you in that day and leap for joy for behold your reward is great in heaven for in the like manner did their prophet, did their fathers unto the prophets. So meaning, you know, hey Penny, you're in good company. <laughs> um, so I just, I wanted to bring you that song. Um, I was going to sing it for you, but you know, I'm just not the greatest singer, so I'll just let it stand with just the words. So um, just know that um, in the days ahead, the remnant will be protected. The remnant will receive powerful gifts, um, but the greatest gift is God's grace. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, our Lord God, King of the universe. Amen.